The story is about a boy named Hikoshima, a pessimist boy, who has lost all hope for his future. He was born into a family where he grew up without any love from either his parents or his siblings. After losing his mother and right hand in an accident, his father lost the remaining expectations he had from him. With Hiko's dominant hand being useless now, his father didn't want him to be a part of their family. So he cancelled his schooling and sent him to their villa in the deep mountains of Chiba, where Hiko will spend his remaining life. As days pass by, the loneliness and negative thoughts in Hiko start to become worse. He wonders how easier it would be for him to just sleep and simply never wake up. One night in a cold winter, someone knocks on the door. He goes to check and sees it's a girl who has come to marry him. Her name is Yuzu and she is sent by Hiko's father. No one from a prominent family would give their daughter to Hiko, so his father bought a bride who would take care of him. Knowing she must have traveled here in this harsh weather, Hiko gives his coat to her. He then shows her the room in which she will stay, and after this, without saying anything else goes to his room. Just like any other day, Hiko yet again had a sleepless night. However, unlike other days, today there is a lot of noise because of Yuzu. She is already awake and cleaning the house. Yuzu wants to be helpful, so she helps wash Hiko's face and insists him to have sleep to avoid dark circles. But Hiko doesn't like how forward she is and goes inside his room. But Yuzu also comes there and starts cleaning the room. Afterwards, she buys vegetables from the village and makes breakfast. But despite these efforts, Hiko doesn't like her. He can't believe he was already living such a rotting life and now, she is making it more irritating. Just then, Yuzu enters the bathroom and insists on cleaning the back. Hiko wonders what's wrong with this girl. Looking at her attitude and energy, he believes she must have lived an easy life. But Yuzu tells him, she has two worries, and both of them are very big. Hiko then realizes he forgot that Yuzu was sold off to cover her parents' debt, so she must have lived a harsh life. Just then, Yuzu unties her hair. They are so fluffy and wavy that she finds it very embarrassing. Looking at her so worked up about it, Hiko laughs but then quickly apologizes for it. However, Yuzu doesn't mind it. She is glad to see it made him laugh. But Hiko had enough of her bothering him. So he throws her out and continues his bath. It's December 31st, 1921, and the year is coming to an end. But it doesn't matter to Hiko because just like always, he is lost in his thoughts remembering how everyone in his family wished he had also died in the accident. Just then, Yuzu enters the room. After lighting up the fire, she makes tea. Hiko finds her irritating. He asks if she doesn't hate him. Being married to a pessimistic man with only one hand working, he asks her to spill out how much she hates her misfortune. Yuzu pours the tea and gives it to him. She sings a soothing song that reminds Hiko of his younger days when his mother used to sing it for his little sister. But then again, he starts to remember the negative thoughts. He is fed up with being unneeded, fed up with being hurt. Every night, he thinks even if he dies, no one will mourn for his death. Yuzu pats his head and comforts him. Hiko asks why a person like her who is not even her family is so kind to him. Yuzu expresses that when she was bought for 10,000 yen, she was afraid as to what type of person her future husband would be. But when she finally met him, she instantly knew how kind he was and that he will cherish her for her entire life. That's why she also wants to cherish him. She holds his hand and asks if they should sleep together since it's a new year. Hiko ends up agreeing. But now, he is freaking out because he doesn't know what to do in such situations. He tries to get some ideas from the dirty magazine. However, what Yuzu meant was to literally sleep together in the same room. Yuzu apologizes if he wanted to sleep in the same futon. But they aren't married so it will be a disgraceful act on her behalf. She hasn't loved anyone but she promises to save herself for him. She wishes him good night and goes to sleep. Hiko wonders what's with this girl. As he closes his eyes, the next he wakes up it's a new year and he is greeted by Yuzu. Yuzu presents breakfast and it's one of the favorite new year dishes. Hiko finds it delicious, but still can't stop thinking about their yesterday's conversation. 
In the afternoon, while Yuzu is bathing, Hiko accidentally enters the bathroom. He immediately closes the door and runs away. Afterwards, Yuzu apologizes for showing her disgraceful side. But Hiko assures her he didn't see anything, as the room was foggy. After this, Yuzu presents the lunch. Just then a mail comes for Hiko from his father. He reads it and finds out that his elder brother and sister have received marriage offers. However, if the other families were to find out they have a useless younger brother it would bring shame to their family and ruin the matches. So in order to prevent it, he has decided to declare him dead in the accident. Hiko's heart just shatters. Yuzu comes and invites him to have dinner, but he tells her to stay away. Poor Yuzu isn't able to sleep. The next day as well Hiko doesn't come out of his room, so she does the household chores. However, in the evening Yuzu had enough. She enters the room and finds out he has a fever. She takes care of him and gets to know about the letter. Because of this, Hiko believes it's better if he dies. This way, his family can get what they have been wanting and she will also be freed from taking care of a pathetic person. Yuzu grabs his cheeks and says it's not funny to say these things. She hugs him and assures him everything is going to be better. By the next day, thankfully Hiko's fever is gone. He looks for Yuzu and finds her singing and making breakfast. When Yuzu sees him, she freaks out and tells him he has to rest more. But Hiko says he was alone so he was feeling bored. Yuzu checks his fever and is glad to see it's gone. To thank her for yesterday, Hiko asks Yuzu if she wants to go to Tokyo. Yuzu immediately agrees. As they arrive there, she is amazed to see so many people wearing modern dresses. But on the other side, Hiko is terrified to see so many people. He swore he'd never leave the house, but it's for Yuzu so he calms down. As they enter a large shop, like a little kid, Yuzu is bursting out with excitement. As a thanks, Hiko wants to buy kimono for her. After picking two kimonos, she asks Hiko which one would look good on her. Both of them look good, so Hiko tells her she can have both. Yuzu freaks out as they are insanely expensive. But Hiko assures her he has enough money. After buying it, she promises him she will treasure it. And to make sure she keeps this precious memory alive, in future when they have kids she will pass it on to them. Hearing such embarrassing things, Hiko heavily blushes. After touring for some more time, Yuzu sets her eyes on some ice cream, so Hiko buys it. It's Yuzu's first time eating it so she is very excited. As she tries to feed him, the people nearby start gossiping about how shameless young people have become. After eating it, they get on the train and head to their home. There, after an exhausting day, Yuzu falls over Hiko's shoulder. And when she is about to fall over to the other side, he pulls her closer and let her have some rest. A few days later, Yuzu is done with sewing her kimono. It's so gorgeous that Hiko can't take away his eyes. Just then, Hiko's younger sister, Tamako, comes. Hiko is terrified to see her. With all her stuff, she has come here to stay for a few days at their family guest house. Hiko panics and reminds her it's his home now. However, Tamako doesn't want to hear from someone who is dead. On seeing Yuzu, she realizes who she is and starts making fun of her height. Hiko reminds Tamako that Yuzu is older than her so she has to respect her. However, Tamako doesn't care about it if the person is this small in height. Hiko is well versed with his sister's wording that lands like a knife in the heart. After some time, Yuzu introduces Tamako to her room and brings her luggage. She also tells her if there is anything she needs, she will be in the next room. While preparing dinner, Hiko apologizes on behalf of his sister. But Yuzu did not feel bad at all. In fact, she likes how merry her nature is and wants to be her friend. Tamako hears the conversation and makes it clear that she is not here to be her friend. Hiko asks her why she has come here in the first place when he is dead to their family. Tamako starts laughing remembering how their sibling were pretending to be sad on announcing his death and even their father pulled off a great act. As she is not going to share a table with her brother, she tells Yuzu to bring the dinner to her room. The next day, for some reason, Hiko doesn't have the appetite to eat breakfast. Yuzu can see how much Tamako's words hurt him, 
so she asks if he would like to go on a walk with her. He refuses at first, but after Yuzu makes a cute face, he agrees. As they walk up the mountain, Hiko notices how beautiful the area around his house is. Soon they arrive at their destination, and by looking at the view, Hiko starts to feel much better. Yuzu is glad to hear it. After this, they visit an Inari statue and later, return home. In the afternoon, while Yuzu is cooking something, Tamako gets curious and asks about it. Unknowing it's milk caramel, she freaks out that something like this can be made in-house. When the candy has been made, Yuzu even feeds it to Hiko and suddenly starts blushing. Hiko finds it tasty which makes Yuzu very happy. However, Tamako suddenly bursts out with anger and furiously asks what's so happy to be about a piece of sugar. She calls them idiots and leaves. At night, as it begins to rain, Tamako wants to use the restroom, but as the thunder rumbles she gets scared and can't muster the courage to go by herself. Remembering Yuzu is next to her room, she asks her to come with her to the restroom. Yuzu agrees. However, on the way, as another thunder rumbles, Tamako ends up peeing herself. Yuzu quickly grabs her and throws her in the bathroom. While Tamako bathes, she warms the water and later combs her hair. Tamako wonders why Yuzu is so kind to her despite all the horrible things she has said to her. For the night, Yuzu insists Tamako to sleep together. There, Tamako shares that since she was young, her father kept his distance from her and used to give money to the servant to deal with her. Even in school, she wanted to make friends but no one would become and keep gossiping and making comments about her height, saying no one would want to marry such a tall girl especially if she is from the arrogant Shima's family. And when she took some days off, her father was furious and asked if she also wanted to be like Hiko. She ends up getting frustrated and that's why came here. Yuzu understands how lonely Tamako must have been. She feels bad hearing it because if she was her older sister, she wouldn't let such a cute little sister ever feel lonely. But Tamako doesn't feel that way. Someone who is this big and with her attitude so big, everyone would hate to have a sister like her. Yuzu assures her she would never hate her, in fact, it would make her happy. As Yuzu sings a lullaby, Tamako ends up falling asleep. The next day, Hiko is stunned to witness the scene and wonders what happened in just one night. After all, it's his first time seeing Tamako happy. But along with being happy, Tamako has become possessive of Yuzu and shuts her brother out while they have their sister's time. After having some fun listening to music with Tamako, Yuzu goes to buy the vegetables and does other housework. It has been more than half a year since Yuzu and Hiko have started living together. And now, Hiko is confused whether he wants her to like him or not. As Yuzu goes to bring some cold tea, on her way, she suddenly collapses. Tamako comes in a panic and finds out Yuzu has a fever. Hiko insists on carrying her, but Tamako refuses because with only one hand he might drop her. So she carries her to Hiko's room which is nearby. Yuzu gains consciousness. Despite having a fever she is worried about them and tells both of them to drink the soup she has made. Tamako decides to go to the village and find a doctor. In the meantime, she tells Hiko to at least be useful enough to cool Yuzu's head. After some time, Tamako arrives along with the doctor and nurse. While he checks Yuzu's health, Hiko draws the water from the well and brings it to the room. However, he isn't able to hold it very well and ends up dropping the bucket. Tamako on seeing it, gives a look and tells him to not do anything from now on. After some time, the doctor tells Hiko that Yuzu has been overworking too much. And because the exhaustion had built up too much she finally reached her limit. The doctor is furious. He knows Hiko is from the Shima family that are famous for having too much attitude, but that doesn't give them the right to treat their servants so badly. No matter how rich they are, some things like this cannot be fixed. After saying this, they leave. Tamako asks Hiko why he didn't said the truth, that Yuzu is not his servant. Hiko didn't said it because it's indeed true that because of him, Yuzu ended up like this. While Tamako goes to take care of Yuzu, Hiko realizes if she would not have been here, who knows what would have happened to Yuzu. He knows if Yuzu stays with him, she will only suffer pain and hardship. 
At night, Yuzu is yet again worried about Hiko and asks if he ate dinner. Tamako assures her he did, but she asks if her brother is the right person for her to marry. He's entirely useless and a pessimistic person who only thinks about negative things. Yuzu says if she leaves him, he will again end up alone, which will make her sad. She believes that one day Hiko will again start looking forward to living his life. After all, he is going to be her future husband. On saying this, her fever again spikes. At 10 p.m., Hiko is in his room worried about Yuzu. He isn't meeting her, because earlier, Tamako told him to not worry because she is with her. But he just can't sit and do nothing. So he decides to go to Yuzu's room. Upon entering the room, he sees Yuzu suffocating and blood on her chest. Hiko begins to worry and looks closer. He sees Yuzu has been trying to tear the bandages but ends up hurting her hand. Yuzu is half asleep and believes the person in front of her is Tamako, so she requests her to untie the bandage. Hiko freaks out and starts looking around and wondering where Tamako is. However, on seeing how much Yuzu is suffering, he decides to cut the bandages. He grabs a scissor and cuts it down. And the moment the bandages loosen up, Yuzu's melons just burst out. Yuzu on waking up freaks out. She apologizes for yet again showing her disgraceful side, but along with her hair, this is the second big thing she is worried about. They are getting so big as if they are absorbing all her height nutrition. She looks fat, her shoulders feel stiff, and there are too many things her melons make her worry about. Suddenly, Hiko apologizes to Yuzu. He tells her he isn't capable of making her happy and can't support her. He can live his own life like he was already living but he wants her to find happiness with someone else. Yuzu hugs him and expresses she will be happy as long as she is with him. The scene shifts to the next day. On seeing Yuzu next to his door, Hiko freaks out and tells her to at least rest for another day, but Yuzu feels great. In fact, she has already made breakfast. Looking at her smile, instead of leaving her, Hiko starts thinking about how he can become a better person so he can support Yuzu. In order to become one, he first needs to get rid of his negative thinking. Just then, Tamako informs them she is leaving for home tomorrow as she is aiming to become a doctor. After meeting Yuzu and seeing how kind she is, Tamako felt the desire to be just like her. And when she saw Yuzu suffering, she was frustrated over her incompetence and decided to gain medical knowledge to help others. Their uncle Tamasuke runs a clinic in Kobe where she will be living and studying. So she tells Yuzu that she doesn't have to worry about anything. The scene shifts to the evening. After packing all the things, Hiko sits next to Tamako and thanks her for coming here and taking care of Yuzu. He would really like if she could visit them again. Tamako blushes and tells him he doesn't need to thank her for it. As for coming here again, she would only visit for her elder sister Yuzu. Just then, Yuzu comes and suggests sleeping together for the last night. At night, while both Yuzu and Tamako are sleeping, Hiko remembers how just like him, Tamako also didn't receive love from their father and mother. But because he was too busy worrying about himself, he never had the chance to ease that burden for her. As a big brother, he is really a failure. But he knows she will be fine and become a fine doctor. After all, she is the one he cherishes the most. The next day, Tamako is about to depart. After talking with Yuzu, while blushingly she tells her brother to next time pat her head when she is fully awake. With this, the train departs. A month later, it's the 1st of September. While Hiko is writing a letter, Yuzu brings some tea. But she suddenly remembers today is the market day, so she quickly heads to the village. On hearing about the village, Hiko remembering what the doctor said earlier begins to worry. In the village, as Yuzu arrives, people start gossiping about how such a little girl is living with a man alone deep in the mountains. But Yuzu doesn't listen to them and continues her shopping. Just then, Hiko comes running. He helps her in carrying stuff and realizes how much the villagers gossip about them. However, it doesn't bother Yuzu. In fact, today she is very happy. After all, since they went to Tokyo, it's their second time going out to buy something together. Both of them spend the next half an hour shopping for vegetables, eating and drinking. 
Hiko on seeing so many books, gets excited. He really loves studying, because from a very young age, both of his parents gave up on him and didn't pay attention to him even if it was his birthday. So the books became his best friends. After buying the books, they head home. At night, Yuzu prepares a feast to celebrate Hiko's birthday. Yuzu asks Tamako about it, so she put her heart into making a gift. It's not something fancy but knowing he loves reading books, she thought a bookmark would suit him. Hiko is so happy he becomes emotional. Yuzu holds his hand and wishes him a happy birthday. Hiko realizes he is not as lonely anymore as he used to be. He hugs her and expresses that just hearing happy birthday meant so much to him. He promises to treasure her, but then corrects himself by saying he meant the gift. Just then, a noise comes of something breaking and Hiko goes to check it. He enters his room and finds a girl sitting and eating the candies Yuzu made. Hiko demands what she is doing here. The girl approaches and introduces herself as Ryo. Hiko freaks out. He wonders how can someone be so calm after breaking into someone's home. Ryo takes out a book she found in his room. She realizes no matter how rich you are, boys are always into these kind of stuff. She offers herself to him and asks if he wants to do it with her. But when Hiko freaks out, she assures him she was only joking. After saying all this she just runs away. Just then Yuzu comes asking about what happened. Hiko doesn't reveal the truth and says Haru just broke the jar. Soon, he realizes, his wallet along with the bookmark is gone. He immediately goes after Ryo. Back in the house, Yuzu smells a female fragrance. On the other side, Ryo on the way, notices that something else came along with the wallet. She doesn't throw it and decides to keep it. Soon Hiko is able to catch up to her and sees her heading inside a home. There, we get to know Ryo's father is a lousy drunken who forces her to steal money from people. And Ryo doesn't like it at all. But her father doesn't like hearing it and slaps her. He takes the money and says it's not enough for his drinks. But Ryo tries to take it back so she can feed her siblings. But yet again, she gets beaten up. On hearing all this, Hiko isn't able to muster up the courage to go inside, so he returns home. Upon arriving, Yuzu is waiting and presents him with a new candy jar. But Hiko doesn't say anything and just goes to his bedroom. The next day, Yuzu asks Hiko if they can visit the shrine in the mountain. But he refuses, saying he has some work to do. He goes to Ryo's house in the hope of getting back his bookmark. However, no one responds to the door. Hiko hears some noise from the backyard and goes to check there. There Ryo is naked and bathing with her siblings. Both of them freak out and after dressing up, Ryo asks if he is here for his wallet. Hiko denies he isn't. All he wants is the bookmark. Just then one of Ryo's brothers, Ryotaro comes seeking help in learning arithmetic. However, Ryo isn't very good at studies, so she blackmails Hiko. With no other choice, Hiko starts teaching. Curious Ryo asks why he is so obsessed about a measly bookmark. Hiko tells her, to him it means more than that. Because it's from the girl who is soon going to be his wife. Soon, more siblings join learning. After hours, they bid him goodbye by calling him sensei. Just then, Ryo's father arrives home. Before he sees Hiko, Ryo tells him to leave immediately and promises to give the bookmark later. With no other choice, Hiko yet again returns home without the bookmark. As he arrives, Yuzu welcomes him and asks if he will eat dinner first or have a bath. But Hiko doesn't have the courage to tell her the truth and goes to his bedroom. However, because of all this, Yuzu is very sad. The next day, he decides to tell Yuzu the truth but then hears Ryo coming. He rushes to the front door. There, on seeing Yuzu, Ryo remembers she is the girl Hiko was talking about. She heard rumors about her being sold off, but she never knew Hiko had a preference for girls of small height. Hiko stands up for Yuzu and says she is far too good for someone like him. So he tells Ryo to watch her mouth. Ryo smiles and asks why he is trying to hide the fact he has a mistress. After all, yesterday they were together and he even gave her the bookmark. On seeing this, Yuzu goes in shock. 
She also realizes Rio has the same female fragrance as the one she found in Hiko's room. Hiko tries to take back the bookmark and promises Yuzu all Rio is saying is a lie. Yuzu says she understands there must be unavoidable circumstances. So she tears up the bookmark and says, let this be the end. Rio tries to say something, but Hiko tells her to just stay away from him and Yuzu. After she leaves, Hiko goes to his room. The Yuzu comes and invites Hiko for breakfast. Throughout the day, Hiko is confused to see unlike what he saw earlier, Yuzu doesn't seem to be bothered by what happened in the morning. Just then a call comes from Tamako. Hiko picks it up and Tamako wishes him a happy birthday. She wanted to wish on the 1st of September, however, she was embarrassed, but then quickly corrects herself by saying she was just busy. Hiko thanks her and after this, Tamako asks if everything is going fine between him and Yuzu. Hiko shares what has happened. On knowing the situation, Tamako asks if he ever thought why Yuzu gave him a bell flower and not any other flower. Hiko doesn't have a clue. So Tamako shares that girls use flowers to express their emotions. And bell flowers signify unchanging love. It's something to give to the person who is your very special. This means Yuzu has pledged to love him forever no matter what happens. But after seeing it was stolen by someone else, her heart was shattered and she ripped the bookmark. Hiko hangs up the phone and goes to his room. He looks at the torn up flower and realizes it's the same as Yuzu's heart. He starts fixing it and does it for hours. By the time it's evening, Yuzu invites him for dinner but she finds him sleeping. As she enters, she sees he was fixing the bookmark. Just then Hiko wakes up. Yuzu tells him he doesn't need to fix it anymore. But Hiko tells her, he now knows what bellflower signifies. No matter what, her love for him will remain the same. Yuzu gets on her knees and apologizes. She admits at that time she wasn't herself. But after he stopped talking and eating with her, she started worrying that she had done something wrong because of which he was avoiding her. Hiko understands it's his fault to begin with. He also apologizes, and says he shouldn't have hidden the truth in the first place. Yuzu forgives him and by the next day, the bookmark is fixed. The next day, as usual, Yuzu is helping Hiko wash his face. But just then, Ryo's siblings come out from the bush and request Hiko's sensei to teach them. On hearing sensei, Hiko agrees. But soon, more kids from throughout the village come to study. As he teaches them, Yuzu is amazed at how much the kids admire Hiko. Just then, Ryo comes. She has come here to make the lunch. So she grabs Yuzu and takes her to the kitchen. The Yuzu asks her if she has any feelings for Hiko. Ryo bluntly tells her she indeed likes him. But she also likes her as well. Just like her, she was also sold to a family. And when she saw Yuzu not breaking down even after knowing the potential affair of the person she loves, Ryo realized she was an interesting girl. Ryo apologizes for what she did, and Yuzu forgives her. After lunch is made, Hiko comes asking if Ryo again said anything to her. But Yuzu assures him everything is alright. Just like today, for the next few weeks, the village kids come to Hiko's house and study for hours. On December 31st, Yuzu and Hiko work together to clean the house. Afterwards, when he gets tired, Yuzu puts his head on her lap and wishes him good night. After a few hours, when he wakes up, Hiko looks for Yuzu and finds her sitting alone in cold weather. He wraps her with his blanket and asks her what was she doing. Yuzu shares she was lost in her thoughts. Actually, today is her birthday, and now that she is of the right age, she is ready to marry him. However, Hiko refuses he can't marry her. She is too good for him, but he and his right hand are useless. He does think it's better if he stays alone, but he also wants to become a better person. He wants to continue his education, so he can find an occupation and use it to support their family. That's why he can't marry her yet. Yuzu understands it and is willing to wait. Just seeing him eating what she makes, him lying on her lap is her ultimate happiness. On hearing this, Hiko just kisses Yuzu and expresses his love. But he starts freaking out upon feeling how soft her lips was. And soon the new year bell rings. 
The scene shifts to the next day after another study session. Before leaving, Ryotaro thanks Hiko for everything. But he won't be able to attend any more sessions with him, and this is his goodbye to him. After saying this, Ryotaro leaves. At night, Ryo comes running and in panic tells them about Ryotaro gone missing. Everyone immediately splits up and starts searching for him. After a few minutes, Hiko and Yuzu finally find him sleeping in a storeroom. When he wakes up, he shares her sister decided to quit stealing, so she tries to sell herself. But he can't bear to see her doing such things. So instead of her, he has decided to work in Tokyo and earn a living for his family. However, he is scared to leave his family. Hiko is amazed to hear it. He tells Ryotaro that he is already way stronger than him. Choosing to work for his family at such a young age is not many people can do. So he should be proud of himself. Just then, Ryo arrives and hugs him. After hearing from the person he admires, Ryotaro has decided to go to Tokyo. The scene shifts to the next day. As the train is about to leave, he hugs Ryo and thanks Hiko for everything. Back at home, Hiko is yet again writing a letter to his father requesting him to allow him to attend school. But he hasn't gotten a reply to any of them. Just then two mail arrives. One is from Yuzu's friend and the other one is from Hiko's uncle, Tamasuke. In the letter, he shares Tamako mentioned to him how Hiko wanted to attend school but their father won't allow it. Tamasuke doesn't know about his older brother, but he can't let such an excellent young man go to waste. He wants to offer his support and will be waiting for his response. Hiko immediately calls him and gives his answer. Yuzu is really happy for him. With this, Hiko is aiming to skip a grade and transfer into the second year of high school. But he would have to take the entrance exam and for that, he needs to study hard. However, with everyone coming to his house he is having a hard time. A famous singer named Kotori Shiratori has come to the Chiba station. Everyone in the village as well as Yuzu is a big fan of hers and wants to meet them. They request him to come along as it will make Yuzu happy. Hiko wants to spend his time studying but if it makes Yuzu happy, he agrees. As they arrive at the Chiba station, a huge crowd has gathered to listen to Kotori's music. She is singing such a soothing music, everyone along with Hiko feels relaxed. Hiko is glad he came here. After this, with more focus, Hiko studies and gives his entrance exam. And thankfully, he is selected. The day comes when he has to attend his new school. After losing his mother, hand, family and friends, he was on the verge of losing everything. But then Yuzu came into his life and gave him a new hope. He bids her goodbye and heads to the school. As he arrives at his school, along with Hiko, there is another transfer student, Hakura Shiratori, the twin brother of Kotori Shiratori. After he introduces himself, it's Hiko's turn. But unknowing he is from the Shima family, the students start gossiping and plan to stay away from him. As expected, they don't talk with him but get close to Hakuru. During P class, Hiko takes time to change, so he ends up arriving late. So as a joint responsibility punishment, everyone is told to run for an hour. After this, his image becomes even worse. During lunch, he eats alone and ends up getting emotional. During art class, everyone is tasked to draw someone important to them. Strangely, Hakura comes and sits next to Hiko. He looks at the drawing and just bursts out with laughter. He teases Hiko by saying he has a great talent and brags about his own drawing. But on seeing the drawing, Hiko instead of laughing, tells Hakura to go and change the number of his glasses. He is genuinely worried about him. As they both start to roast each other's art, the teacher punishes them and tells them to make each other's portraits. So they go to Hiko's house where Yuzu is very happy to see a visitor. While they are busy, Hakura mentions Yuzu has an adorable smile. Hiko agrees. He expresses, just seeing it makes him very happy. But unknowing what he just said he starts blushing and goes to the kitchen to bring some tea. There, Yuzu asks about the school. Hiko lies that all the students are good-natured, and he has made a lot of friends. And together they even ran a marathon. Yuzu is happy to hear it, and glad he brought his friend to their house. It's evening, and their drawing is complete. 
There, Hakura asks him why he lied to Yuzu. Hiko tells him, he doesn't want to see her sad. Even if it's a lie, seeing her smile makes him happy. But now he thinks it's better to just tell her the truth. Hakura calls him an idiot and advises him to make everything he has said come true. Lying for a good reason is never bad. So he just has to convert his lies to truth. During dinner, Hakura compliments the dish made by Yuzu. He is glad to be friends with Hiko because of which he is able to enjoy such a tasty meal. On hearing Hakura calling him a friend, Hiko isn't able to hide his red face. The next day, Hakura brings his sister. At first, Yuzu doesn't realize who she is, but when Kotori shows her face, she begins to panic. Kotori is here to learn about love from Yuzu. She wants to make a song about love, however, she has no idea about it. That's why after knowing about how much she and Hiko love each other she just wanted to reach out to them and learn from them. Yuzu and Hiko don't mind, and show Kotori her room where she will be staying until her music is completed. After Hakura leaves, Kotori begins her work and notes down whatever she can. Soon, the children come to study. But on seeing Kotori, they all freak out and instead of studying start singing together. The scene shifts to the next day, at school. A student has forgotten his pencil box, so he asks for a spare. With no one to have it, Hiko comes forward and gives the pencil. The student thank him. After this, Hakuru shows them an adult magazine that Hiko had lent him. Obviously, Hiko didn't, but everyone in the class finds it cool as it's the latest edition. After school, Hakuru asks how his sister is doing. Hiko shares she is enjoying herself with others. However, she is having a hard time writing the song. Since Kotori has been staying at the house, Hakuru hasn't been visiting. So Hiko invites him. However, Hakuru refuses. At home, Kotori is having a hard time, so she asks Yuzu to tell her how she met Hiko. Yuzu thinks back and shares she was bought by Hiko's father to serve as his wife. At first, she was very scared about her future husband and throughout her journey, she kept thinking about it. But when she finally met him, she was relieved to see how kind he was. After that, she went through a lot of emotions and experiences. That made her scared as well as happy. Kotori asks if Hiko is always on her mind. While blushing, Yuzu nods her head. Listening to all this, Kotori gets a better understanding of love. She is grateful to Yuzu because now she can come up with a great song. Yuzu knows it will be a wonderful song because no one is as serious as her when it comes to loving music. But Kotori doesn't feel that way. She says Hakura was the one who loved music first. The scene shifts to the evening. As usual, Hiko shares what happened in the school and how he feels like Hakuru is avoiding Kotori. Yuzu also shares what she heard today. The following day at school, during lunch, Hiko asks Hakuru if something happened between him and Kotori. Hakuru realizes he should tell the story. He shares that he was the first one to get into music. He put everything into his music, however, he got diagnosed with a disease and wasn't allowed to take part in any activity for several years. So he gave his guitar to Kotori and promised to sing together when he recovers. After seven years, by some miracle, his health was recovered and by that time Kotori had become a very famous singer. She reminded him about the promises, however, he was worn out and didn't have the strength to catch up to her. He calls himself pathetic for his inferior complexity. Hiko tells him he is not the only one. He also felt like dying whenever he looked at his hand or when he remembered his family's tormenting words. But Yuzu came and helped him in taking his first step to become a better person. And just like her, Hakuru is also the one who has helped him. Hearing this, Hakuru is glad to know he is friends with Hiko. Now he believes he should keep his promise to Kotori. The following day, it's the debut of Kotori's love song. A huge crowd has gathered. But before she sings, Hakuru comes forward and sings his song. The song is dedicated to his sister, the one they used to sing when they were younger. Kotori gets emotional and joins him. When it's finished, Kotori sings her new song. The scene shifts in the evening. On the way, Yuzu is amazed by Kotori's new song. Because of it, 
She feels like saying I love you to Hiko, but doesn't muster up the courage and just hugs him. The following day, Yuzu receives a letter from her friend Midori. After reading it, she is freaking out to know Midori is pregnant so she is getting married. Midori definitely did things out of order, but Yuzu is very happy for her best friend. And before Midori moves to her future husband's home, she is inviting Yuzu to Tokyo for a few days. Yuzu doesn't want to go because she is worried about Hiko and what he will do about his meals. But Hiko assures her everything will be fine, so he insists her to go and enjoy herself. In the afternoon, they go to a village shrine to pray for Midori and her future child. Yuzu also suggests coming here when they two are going to have a baby. But Hiko gets embarrassed and quickly brings a good luck charm for Midori. With this, the next day, Yuzu is ready to depart for Tokyo. While she is gone, she has asked Ryo to make food for Hiko. Yuzu holds his hand and expresses she will miss him. As they both are about to kiss, Hiko slaps himself for doing indecent things in public. He comforts her and promises they will do a lot of kissing when she comes back home. But after she leaves, he wonders why on earth he said that. Upon arriving in Tokyo, Yuzu meets up with Midori. It's been so long that both are emotional to reunite. They go to a nearby cafe where Midori share how much trouble she had to face by getting pregnant before marriage. Her parents and relatives were very angry, but her boyfriend immediately took responsibility and promised to marry her. Yuzu is very happy to know he is a wonderful man. She gives the good luck charm to Midori. After spending a lot more time doing various things together, at night, Midori asks Yuzu if she is not going to marry. Yuzu says Hiko doesn't want to right now. So she'll wait. Midori is worried and asks what if he never does. Yuzu calmly replies she will stay by his side forever. But then realizes she can't have kids in that case when in fact, she wants a lot of them. Midori thought after Yuzu was sold off, she would be crying and depressed. But now seeing her happy, she is relieved. A few days later, it's the 1st of September, 1923. And because it's also the day Yuzu will be coming home, Hiko is getting restless. Just then, the infamous Great Kanto earthquake strikes. Within just a minute, the whole village has collapsed. Everywhere people are panicking, extinguishing the fire and helping those who are stuck. Hiko begins to wonder if a tiny village has suffered this much, what about Tokyo? His head starts to fill up with negative thoughts about Yuzu being stuck under a rubble of buildings or caught on a fire. As another earthquake comes, Hiko hears Haru's voice coming from Yuzu's room. He goes there and finds a letter written by her. In it, she wishes him the best for his birthday and about the gloves and muffler she has sewed for him as a gift. Once she returns, they will both ride on a bicycle in the cold winter. Hiko realizes no matter what the situation, Yuzu is the strongest girl he has seen. He believes she will definitely survive this ordeal. But he cannot just sit and do nothing. He promised to stay beside her and protect her, so he decides to go to Tokyo. Without wasting any more time, Hiko gets ready, prepares the meal and heads out. On his way, he meets his students and Ryo. Ryo also wants to come with him because of Ryotaro. The little ones are also worried about their brother and assures they will be all right by themselves. Knowing the house has been destroyed and many are injured, Hiko tells them while he is gone, he wants them to bring every villager who has lost their home to his house. His grandfather made the house sturdy so it's very fine. Everyone thanks him, and with it, Hiko and Ryo depart. On the way, they come across other villages where the condition is also brutal. The trains are off-railed, houses are destroyed, and people are in complete despair. By evening, he arrives in Tokyo. There, the situation is even worse. The buildings aren't standing, and people all over are trying to find shelter. He shouts Yuzu's name, but just then a person calls him. The moment Hiko sees it's Tamako, he collapses from exhaustion. When he wakes up, he sees Tamasuke uncle. Medical groups throughout Japan have come here to treat people after hospitals have been destroyed. He advises him to rest for some more time, but Hiko can't. He needs to search for Yuzu immediately. 
Tamasuke tells him it might sound cruel, but finding one young woman in Tokyo amidst the situation is almost impossible. But Hiko just can't sit here doing nothing. He believes Yuzu is definitely alive. Hearing him, Tamasuke is surprised as well as amazed to see how positive he has become. He would like to meet the girl who has done miracles on his nephew as well as on his niece. With this, Hiko, Ryo, and Tamako are ready to head out. They split up and search for Yuzu and Ryotaro. Hiko comes around a statue on which many missing people's names are. So he puts Yuzu's name and continues his search. On their way, they visit many first aid sites, but no matter where they look, they aren't successful. On going further ahead, Hiko comes across people who are talking about burned corpses being cremated right on the spot. Hearing this, Tamako begins to panic on realizing they might never see Yuzu. At first Hiko was also in a shock, but he knows he have to be strong in front of Tamako, so he comforts her and assures her Yuzu will be fine. By the time it's night, they come across a girl who is about to take her life. However, it's Midori who just came here to pray. On seeing the good luck charm, Hiko realizes who she is. He asks about Yuzu and she shares that while they were escaping, they got separated. And after she lost consciousness, the next she woke up was at the first aid site. Midori blames herself for the current situation. If she hadn't called Yuzu here in the first place, she would have been fine. Hiko comforts her to not think like that. He tells Tamako to take care of Midori and goes to search for Yuzu. Without any rest, he visits first aid sites, as well as those who have died. The next day, he comes across Kotori and Hakuru, who are singing to cheer up people and helping in handing out the rations. Unknowing about Yuzu, Hakuru and Kotori also begin to worry for her. Hiko receives rice balls from Kotori and continues his search. Thankfully Ryotaro has been found, and the villagers are being treated in Hiko's house, so now it's only Yuzu who is left. Suddenly, a boy steals the rice balls and runs away. But when his sister falls down and is caught, he returns and begs Hiko to not hurt his sister. Hiko assures he won't, because he too has a sister. He gives them the rice balls and gets to know they have been separated from their parents. They take Hiko to the place where they are staying, and share how an older sister who was helping them suddenly fell. On knowing the girl's name is Yuzu, Hiko immediately goes inside the house and finds her unconscious. He tells the kids to go just a bit ahead where they will find Kotori Shiratori. After this, he carries Yuzu and heads to the hospital. Hiko is trembling with fear about what might happen to Yuzu, but he is at least glad to see she is alive. As Yuzu wakes up she sees Hiko and just bursts into tears. She gives him a tight kiss and tells him she loves him very much. But on seeing they are not alone, she becomes embarrassed. Everyone is very glad to see her alright. Tamasuke meets Yuzu and thanks her for taking care of his nephew. As Yusa eats the rice porridge, she begins to cry. She was so scared that she might never see Hiko again. Just then, Hiko's father, Yoshi and Hiko's elder sister come. Tamaki was injured in the earthquake and so Yoshi wants Tamasuke to visit his home immediately. But Tamasuke refuses. After what he did to him, he is no longer a part of Shima's family. And above all, there are people he has to take care of. On seeing Hiko, Yoshi asks what a dead person is doing here. Tamasuke defends Hiko and says he has become stronger. Hiko traveled and came here in search of his lover, so he is not the person who he used to know. Yoshi doesn't say anything and before he leaves, Hiko expresses how glad he is to see him in great condition. However, Yoshi ignores him and leaves. After this, for the next few days, they all help the people in need and later return to Chiba to help and build the village there. A month later, the village finally has been completely built, and Hiko and Hakuru are relaxing in the hot spring. When he returns home, everyone wishes him a happy birthday. They all are late, but they are glad everyone is here to enjoy it. After celebrating, Yuzu and Hiko visit the Inari statue in the mountain. There, Yuzu once again tells Hiko how much she loves him. She wants to hold his hand and give him a lot of kisses. There are so many indecent things coming into her mind that she turns red. Hiko thanks her for coming into his life. 
He also says he loves her, and both of them share a kiss. If you enjoyed the recap, please consider liking and subscribing this channel. Have a wonderful day ahead.